while cleaning out my closet, I came across the LG G watch and thought, maybe I should give this watch a second look. Why this watch is so memorable is that this was the first Android Wear watch. It came out in 2014, so a good six years ago. So what I really wanted to see was, first off, does the watch still work and is it good today? So I charged the watch on a stand for a good few hours and then booted it up again and connected it to my phone. I went through the whole reset process, which you had to do to, re to pair it to a different phone, and I paired it to my current Pixel 3a. It did take a while for the phone to factory reset and then boot up again. Probably took a, about five minutes. But once it was done, it did boot up correctly. So, like I mentioned, I connected it to my Pixel 3a, I downloaded the Wear OS app, which works with Android Wear watches, and uh, it, I was off. So here is the startup of the watch. So it gives you a little tutorial on how to use it, um, swiping different directions, doing different things. For example, if you swipe to the right, it dismisses the card. If you swipe to the left, it gives you more information. And then just kind of how to use it. This is different than Wear OS, but it is Android Wear, so it surprisingly still runs very nicely. This little thing here, you can hold your hand over, and then it'll turn the watch off. There are, are some good ideas, you know, thrown out in here about how a watch should should operate and back in 2014 this was when Google Now was obviously still around and there were a lot of card functions throughout the interface so then here looking at the the watch faces there are a lot of watch faces pre-installed and you can install different watch faces as well through the Wear OS app on your phone or you can also download apps that give you more watch faces, similar to like a wallpaper app that you would download on your phone. Just going through some of the quick settings here. And then going into the main settings, as you can see, you can adjust, you can adjust the brightness. So they give you different numbers up to six on how bright you want it to be. I just picked five here. And then you can change the date and time um, and then the font size. And then gestures, like if you want, if you lift up your wrist, then the watch turns on and then it just kind of shows you how to use it again. There's an always on mode, which obviously is going to drain more battery, but it lets you see the time at any time. Then there's just a list of Bluetooth devices, so you could connect headphones, wireless headphones, to this. Um, but if you connect them to your phone, then that works as well. There's an airplane mode, accessibility, some options in there. Date and time, it just bases it off of the phone that it's connected to. You can have a screen lock for the watch itself, similar to an Apple Watch if you put in a password or something. You can disable that or enable it, just depends on what you want. Permissions, this can all be done within the phone app, so it's not necessarily needed here. Unpair device, it looks deathly. This is just your settings menu. And if you go down to the build number, just like on any Android phone, you can enable developer options, which is great. There's also a system updates tab in here as well, but the watch is all up to date, which it did during the setup process. Then in, in developer options, once you enable that, there are uh, a few different un unique things on here like you can stay awake when it's charging so say you have it plugged in um, on your stand you can see it all night if you really want to you can enable that not quite sure why that's a developer option but um, it's a nice feature to have and then there, there are just those normal developer options such as show touches all of that stuff that's normally in your Android phone 
But now that I went through all of the settings, I'm going to go through the apps. Now you can install more apps if you want to um, via the Google Play Store. These are just the apps that I have installed. So going to agenda, it basically just says what's on your calendar. I just have one event here, as you can see. You can swipe it away as a card and it'll stay there if you keep it there. Otherwise, you have to dismiss it unless you open the agenda, basically the calendar. Alarms, you can set an alarm here. As you can see, you just swipe over for the time or the hour and then AM or PM. Pretty simplistic, not a whole lot in there. Compass, I had some issues setting up. So what happened here um, in this video is it, the compass does not work when it's charging for whatever reason. The app starts up and it asks you to move it around in like a figure eight rotation, similar to what Google Maps asks of you sometimes if you're in a really crowded area. So that's what I did. Waved it around in a figure eight pattern. And then it ended up working and it was fairly, fairly accurate. And then once I set the watch down, it just died for whatever reason. It was on 95% battery, it just, died. I'm not really sure as to what caused this, but throughout the rest of the video and filming, it did not die when it was off of the charger, so I thought that was kind of weird. Next up, there is a find my phone function. Which as you can see, works. Then there's Google Fit. It just tells you pretty much how many steps you've taken each day. As you can see, I haven't taken any steps. And you can set the daily step total on the watch itself. Otherwise, you can view more, I think, in the Google Fit app. I do not have the Google Fit app. I've never really used it. So this could be uh, nice for some people, you know, if you're just going on, a, on some walks or something. But it's not used as like a, a primary fitness device. Flashlight is pretty self-explanatory. It just lights up the screen. You can turn it off, turn it on. Not much else there. The Google app is a majority of what makes this watch smart. So there are all these different functions that you can do. It just gives you some examples here that you can ask Google. So you can say, okay, Google. And then you can say any of these things. You can call people, text a message to someone, send a message via Hangouts, or like set reminders, that kind of stuff. You can't say, hey Google, you can just say, okay Google, because this is before hey Google was a thing. As you can see here, I just tried out a little reminder and it says that it did not work, but later in the video, when I hit reminders, it does work. Then within reminders, if you create a new reminder, you can either create a new one via your voice or for some reason, it has an emoji option, draw emoji. I'm not really sure why that's in the reminders app. As you can see here, I, I tried to do XD and uh, yeah, that's not what came up. It is interesting how it uses the watches emoji, not the phones because they do not have the blob emojis anymore on the Pixel lineup or on Gboard, but for some reason, um, they are here. So it's using the watch emojis built into the watch, which is interesting to see. Sometimes I can get it right, like a smiley face, but that's not a very complex drawing. Gboard's ability to recognize drawn emojis, it's much, much better than this watch. Then there's a timer. Very basic, but totally works for what you need a, a, a stopwatch to do. 
And then this is the timer. Uh, excuse me, I think I said timer before. It's a very simplistic thing. You can choose hours, minutes, seconds, and then let it run. And then you can dismiss it if you want to. Otherwise, you can pause it or restart it. The Together app is weird. You can find friends who also have Wear Android Wear watches next to you and do stuff with them. I did not have anyone who had a Wear device, so I wasn't able to test that out. The Translate app on this watch is much slower than you would find in the Translate app today, but it does work. So if you allow Translate to record audio, it can hear what you're saying. So as you can see here, I'm going to say a Spanish phrase. Me gustan las galletas. And it did translate it accurately. And then going the other way, I like cookies. It does work. Now, it obviously cannot say out loud what it is because there's no speaker, but uh, the translation is accurate. Moving on to the next app, weather. They have the weather for your current location, and it shows the next four days of temperatures and what's going to be happening, such as rain, partly cloudy, sunny, and that kind of stuff. And then finally, there's the world clock. So you can add cities to the world clock if you want. Uh, you can have a whole list of them. You can swipe up and down. You can either do it by time zone, add new ones, or you can just do it by your voice by saying a city. Tokyo, Japan. And then that's the whole list of apps, at least the ones that I have installed on the watch. Now, these are pretty much just the ones that come with the watch, regardless of what you have. I haven't really installed any other third-party apps or anything on here. So this would be a good and accurate representation of what you would get when you boot up the watch in 2014. Then just looking at the exterior of the watch, it charges via the pins, so you just place the pins onto the dock, and then chargers. No wireless charging here, but many cheaper smartwatches still use the same system. So it, it works uh, pretty well. It takes a while to charge. And then here's just a, a demonstration of the OK Google voice recognition and uh, what exactly it can do. What's the weather like? Okay, Google. Show me pictures of Karen Terriers. What's amazing to me is that a lot of the features on this watch still work, despite coming out quite a while ago at this point and being the first Android wear smartwatch even though now wear os um, has become the new thing you can just download the wear os app for any watch that used android wear and a lot of the functionality still works i even thought that the battery wouldn't last all that long um, considering that it died while i was filming it but as of now it has 90 percent i've been using it maybe 15 minutes so it's not great it probably won't last through the whole day at this point because batteries obviously degrade over time but you know i'm gonna try using this again for a day uh and just see how it goes there's one last feature of this watch i just wanted to show off and that is um, regarding music so whether you're using this as a fitness watch or just a regular smart watch you can control the music that you have playing on your phone. You can play or pause the song, and then if you swipe over, you can increase the volume, decrease the volume, 
or you can uh, change the track so go forward or go backward it works for pretty much anything that you are playing on your phone whether you're using google play music or spotify or something like that these are just uh, the, the controls for how to use that music so obviously in 2020 people aren't going to be running out to the store to go buy an lg g watch but i just thought it was kind of interesting to see where android wear started and what it has become now wear os is definitely not a perfect watch os but they have improved some things of android wear it's very interesting to just see how the watch worked when it was uh, created and most of the functionality still works so what i'm going to do is i am going to try this for a day or a week and, and just see I think the one aspect that is going to make it the hardest to use the watch is just the battery life because when this watch originally came out the battery was great in the first place and now that it's been out for six years the battery has definitely degraded but if you just need a watch that lets you see your notifications see the time and maybe the weather or something like that i mean this watch totally works for that let me know if you're still using a smartwatch, and uh, if so why did you choose the smartwatch that you have? Thank you for tuning in to Tea Time.